Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill. This is morning prayer for Thursday, October the 26th. It's the 21st week after Pentecost and week two in the Psalm cycle. Thanks for joining me. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, do not fret because of the wicked, and do not envy the workers of iniquity. Alleluia. Psalm 37, and please recite it with me. Alleluia, do not fret because of the wicked, and do not envy the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down and wither like the grass of the field. Trust in God and do good, and you will dwell in the land and be fed. Delight yourself in the Most High, and God shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit yourself to the Most High. Trust, and God shall act. God shall bring forth your righteousness like the light, and your judgment like the noonday sun. Rest in the Most High and wait patiently. Fret not when the wicked prosper who plot to bring down the needy and the poor. Cease your anger and forsake your rage. Do not fret, for it leads to evil. For the wicked shall perish, but those that wait on the Most High shall inherit the earth. For soon the wicked shall have gone. You cannot see their homes, because they are no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and enjoy abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the just, and gnash on them with their teeth. The Most High shall laugh at the wicked, for God sees that their day is coming. The wicked have drawn their sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy and to slay the upright. But their swords shall pierce their own hearts and their bows shall be broken. What little the righteous have is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Most High upholds the righteous. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Do not fret because of the wicked, and do not envy the workers of iniquity. Alleluia. Ezra, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Most High from the mouth of Jeremiah, the Most High stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and also in writing, saying, Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, the Most High, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in, Jeru in Judah. Let any of those among you who are of his people, may their God be with them, go up to Jerusalem and Judah and rebuild the house of the Most High, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let all survivors in whatever place they reside be assisted by the people of their place with silver and gold, with goods and with livestock, besides free will offerings for the house of God in Jerusalem. Then the heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred, got ready to go up and rebuild the house of the Most High in Jerusalem. All their neighbors aided them with silver vessels, with gold, with goods, with livestock, and with valuable gifts, besides all that was freely offered. King Cyrus himself brought out the vessels of the house of the Most High that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed in the house of his gods. King Cyrus of Persia had them released into the charge of uh, Mithradeth, the treasurer, who counted them out to Sheshbazer, the prince of Juzer, Judah. And this was the inventory. Gold basins, 30. Silver basins, 1,000. Knives, 29. Gold bowls, 30. Other silver bowls, 410. Other vessels, 1,000. 
The total of the gold and silver vessels was 5,400. All of these the Sheshbazer brought up when the exiles were brought up from Babylonia to Jerusalem. Here ends the lesson. Now let us pray for the church in the world, for the mission of the church, that it may extend the peace and the love of Christ to all people. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jennifer Ann, our bishop, for Brother Joe, our community servant, for all church leaders and for all clergy and ministers, that they may be ever faithful servants of word and sacrament. For unity in the church, that our scandalous divisions may be healed. For the poor, for the hungry and the thirsty, and for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine. For Joe, our president, for Katie, our governor, and for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all of the earth. That God, who has begun this ministry, may bring it to fulfillment. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers, and for all of your intentions. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lead us in your paths, O God, and grant that we may ever find our delight in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. <laughs>